Today we're going to be talking about the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church, speaking of prayers. First of all, can you just give us an overview of what this day is all about? Sure. So um, as the title suggests, today is a prayer, a day of prayer. Or it was the other day, but um, it's a day of prayer for the persecuted church. As we know, um, 80% of religious persecution is intended towards Christians, and um, it's not it's not stabilizing or decreasing. It's only growing. So the work that In Defense of Christians does is more important than ever. So we, um, we took part of this day to bring awareness to the issue, of course, that Christian is facing and the church is facing but more importantly, to gather in prayer and um, advocacy. So we are very blessed to um, to be speaking with you today about it and making our voices heard to your listeners. Well, I know that there are some particular intentions that you would like to ask for our listeners' uh, continued prayers for. So first of all, what would you like us to pray about with Christians in Iraq? Sure. So as you know, um, Iraq has always been a very unstable country the past, you know, several decades. But um, as as your listeners may know, they had elections um, in mid-October where the results were very favorable for Christians. They won five out of the nine seats allocated for minorities, which was a huge win. But um, other factions were not happy with the results, and there's been a lot of violence and protests in the, since the elections. And there was a recent assassination attempt on the prime minister, so um, as we've said several times on the show, political instability is uh, incredibly, incredibly dangerous for the Christian minorities of the, of the region and, of course, the country, because uh, political instability is um, very dangerous for the overall economic political stability. So when there's violence within the government, um, it really destabilizes the region and we become very wor- worrisome for the Christian populations there. So um, Iraq is a very um, important issue for us because it is uh, an ancient Christian community that's faced a lot of issues and the political instability is uh, only increasing. So we ask your listeners to really pray for the political stability of the region there. Speaking of the need for political stability, you also would like to ask for continued prayers for Lebanon. Yes, of course. As we know, um, Lebanon is the last protector of the Christian faith in the region. Polit- uh, Christians there are not persecuted for their faith. It's more economic persecution. Um, there's ongoing uh, talks with the, uh, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, which is more important than ever. But tensions with neighboring countries are causing a lot of issues with current um, uh, problems with Saudi Arabia. So asking your, your listeners to pray for um, Lebanese leaders to wake up and make sure that they um, have good relations with their neighbors because, for example, Saudi Arabia is the third largest recipient of Lebanese goods, so it's very important for the important exports of the nation to be on good terms with everybody. And I don't need to tell your listeners this because we talk about it very frequently. Lebanon is going through um, a disastrous economic depression. Um, food prices have jumped 559, uh, 57% since October 2019. 19, which is huge, and um, I've been to Lebanon recently, and I can't even tell you how how terrible it is to walk into a grocery store and see, you know, 60%, 70% of the shelves empty because there's no food, there's no electricity, there's no clean water, and uh, it's becoming a, a very uh, dangerous country to live in because of the economic um, devastation, and again, like Iraq, it is tied to political stability, so I do ask your, prayer, uh, your prayers in this um uh, for political leaders to wake up and get um, get everything going for the sake of the last protector of the Christian faith in the Middle East. Absolutely. And then finally, tell us about Egypt, Sarah. What can we pray for with Egypt? Um, Egypt is a little bit different situation in terms of uh, what pers- what kind of persecution. Uh, Coptic um, Egyptians face, which is the Christians of Egypt, face uh, a lot of legal barriers for um, building churches, participating in government. We we're happy to see U.S. Secretary of State Blinken with his um, Egyptian counterpart, Shakuri, uh, discussing what they called the strategic dialogue in Washington yesterday. But they, we know that we talk, they talked about bilateral ties, but more importantly, human rights. So we're continuing to advocate for the release of Coptic activist Rami Kamel, who has been in two years in jail without formal charges. And unfortunately, his case is uh, not you know, a full case. Many Coptic um, activists are facing similar, um, uh, you know, 
wrong, uh, you know, capture and things of that nature. But we're really working for equal rights for Coptics, uh, Coptic Christians in Egypt. We don't want to just see photos of President Sisi on Christmas in a church. We want to see reform um, and accountability from the Egyptian government and how they treat their ancient Coptic community. Whether they're 10% of the population or 90, they are still proud Egyptian citizens that deserve to have equal and unconditional rights. There's something wrong with a society when there is one mosque for every 800 Muslims, but one church for every 2,400 Christians. That's a 300% difference. And so we really would like to ask your uh, listeners to pray for um, equal legal rights for Coptic uh, Christians in Egypt. And Sarah, just to, to close out the conversation, I mean, of course, it is so important, the work that, that you do at In Defense of Christians, for instance, and, and other organizations who work for advocacy in, in the realm of, you know, politics and diplomacy, working with world leaders and and trying to to get these um, these rights for Christians and to really help improve their lives. But can you speak to the importance of just regular old me or you praying for these people and and that kind of advocacy, the the advocacy of 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 asking for the intercession of the saints in heaven. Yes. So um, as you've mentioned, the work is very important, and what we do is very important in Congress and with the administration. But um, our prayers need to be heard. So coming together and uh, making sure that we have a solidified message is one thing, but uh, speaking to our Lord and making sure that. He knows our intentions are pure and that we care for the persecuted church is uh, more important than anything else. And so we do ask your listeners to uh, join us on this. Or the other day was the International Day of uh, Prayer for the Persecuted Church, but to pray every day for um, the church, especially in the Middle East and Africa. Time and time again, we highlight these issues, but there's uh, a lot more than we can talk about in the short segment weekly. And so we do ask your listeners to Go online, take a look at the work that we're doing and what um, what other issues these communities face. And um, prayers, 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 that's all we can do and uh, continue our advocacy. So thank you, Annie, so much for always helping us um, bring light to this issue. And uh, your prayers are always needed. Well, we are, are so honored to do so, to be working with In Defense of Christians in just this small way through the Sunrise Morning Show. We've got indefenseofchristians.org linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Really do encourage listeners to go check out the website and learn about all of these things that that our prayers are so desperately needed um, for. So, Sarah Basile, as always, thank you so much for bringing it to our attention this morning. Thank you, Annie, for having me.